Okay, so deep dive into Charles Oliveira taking on Benil Dariush. This is the heartbreaker. The heartbreaker at UFC 289. One of them has to lose. I'm not a fan of either one of them losing, honestly, because I'm a big fan of both of these guys. Now, Charles Oliveira, 33 and 9. What an incredible record. 22 and 4 and 1 for Benil Dariush. Um, Oliveira's just been around forever, hasn't he? So you've got Oliveira standing at 5 foot 10. And Darius also standing at five foot ten. Two inch reach for Oliveira, though. He is quite long. Now, Charles, obviously, we know he's the submission wizard. He also gets into reckless striking exchanges, mostly because I think he understands that his sweeps and his guard game is so good that actually he doesn't need to worry about being taken down too much. And his scrambling sweeps, absolutely brilliant. His ability to find the back is frankly legendary. And when he does find the back, He's he's it's all over really. He goes for the high percentage submissions. That's why he has so much success because he's very very intelligent. He's very smart with his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right when you look at all the chokes that he goes for, they're all the high percentage chokes, like from for either from the back or from top position. Your guillotines, anaconda chokes, rear naked chokes. Right, that accounts for 17 of his submissions. In that that's crazy. That's a, that's a very high number. Why? Because they're the high percentage chokes. When you look at the actual overall pie chart of submissions, it's a very, very large number. It's like 90, 90%, I think, is... A, 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 I think it might be 90% are on the neck, and of that, not of, of that 90%, a very high number are rear naked chokes, because that's the high percentage one. You get the back... That's king. The back is king. And Oliveira knows that. And that's why he's so good at finding it. Now, Charles has also started adding a lot of striking, but it's, he's mostly free to do the striking because he doesn't have to worry about being taken down, as we said. But we've seen him get into some reckless exchanges and he does get clipped sometimes. But again, people then go into his guard and he just catches them out. Obviously, Islam didn't, didn't really fall for that, but uh, it, he didn't have a chance to catch him but anyway Benil Dariush he's also a very high Brazilian jiu-jitsu player he's a black belt he's got a black belt in Muay Thai as well his top game is crushing he controls on the ground very very well but I don't necessarily see him being the better grappler in this fight I think that's fair to say now for me I'm very very torn I think that on the feet Benil he's the better striker from a technical standpoint he probably is the better striker but is that going to make up for the reach and also the recklessness of Charles Oliveira? Charles Oliveira's willingness to strike is, re is something that, that really throws some fighters off because you know that Charles Oliveira, you have to watch the submissions. You have to be careful of those. But then when he comes out striking, you're like, oh man, what do I do now? I wasn't really, you know... It He's just he, he's become a very well-rounded fighter. Like a very, he's a danger in all areas, honestly. Not that Benil Dariush isn't. Benil Dariush, he's the dark horse of that division. Eight fight win streak. You know, you don't you don't put that together by accident. His his top game is just absolutely crushing. He's measured, he's patient, he 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 takes risks, but they're calculated risks, and he doesn't generally leave himself vulnerable, which is a very difficult thing to do, especially at 155 pounds, when you see that it's just an absolute murderer's row. So for me, for me. On the feet, if it stays standing and Benil catches Charles, I don't think he lets Charles off the hook. I think that he's... I think Benil Dariush is too smart of a fighter. He really is very... He's very, very high fight IQ. I don't think that he goes rushing straight in. I think that there's a chance that if Benil catches Charles, he forces the stand up and just goes back in again because that's what a few of those guys should have done against... Charles Oliveira because you go rushing in he gets you in guard he gets the sweep he gets you back he gets the choke you're done Benil's not going to risk that he's he's really quite clever and, and I do think from a technical standpoint Benil Darius is probably going to have the better striking of the two leg kicks especially like your leg kicks and just the ability to keep range and control the distance I feel like is something Benil does very very well and I don't think Benil's fine with winning a decision as well. He'll be, he'll be perfectly happy with that. And I think that that might be kryptonite for Charles Oliveira because he relies on people wanting to finish him, like 
rushing in into his guard, making a mistake. However, I would say that it's a long time for Charles not to get you to the ground at some point and find the back, which is what I think is going to happen. I think that it's going to be a measured pace until it isn't. The a scrambles are going to be created. I know that Charles isn't necessarily known for like double leg takedowns, but you, he's got he's quite long. He's able to use the clinch really quite effectively. We'll see a scramble, a takedown at some point, and when that happens, I do think Charles Oliveira on the ground is going to be because I mean, Benil Darius, he's a black belt. He is extremely high level, but there are levels above that, and one of those guys is Charles Oliveira. On the ground, I think that scramble happens. Charles Oliveira finds the back, gets the rear naked choke. And that's my prediction for it. it I mean, obviously, I could see it going the other way. I could see Benil just piecing Charles to pieces, taking out the legs, taking out the movement, and just content to just pick him apart until, like, if he finds the knockout, great. But he's not going to be bothered if he doesn't because he's not going to put himself in danger to risk that because that's where people come and stuck against Charles Oliveira and as I've mentioned before Char um, Benil Dariush he's, he's far too clever for that but I don't know something tells me we're going to see Charles Oliveira find the back find the submission and then we'll see him fight Islam again I would say caveat I, I think I'm leaning towards like obviously I, I, I'm a huge fan of both guys massive fan and I want to see both of them win, ideally. But if I was going to see one of them win, I'd rather it be Benil Dariush because I do think that his style matches up better with Islam Makachev's. I'm not really sure why I think that, but I just it's just that gut feeling. What do you think about that? Who, who do you think matches up better with Islam Makachev out of Charles Oliveira and Benil Dariush? It's a good question, isn't it? It's a good question. One that I'm going to have to think about. But yeah, my prediction for this submission, Charles Oliveira, but... This should be the main event, really. It's it's not even a contest. Everybody's coming for this fight. That's the I'm not crazy in saying that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you enjoy the fights. Uh, if you're watching this after the fights, like the week after, this video was available on Patreon before the fights. So if you want to catch these extra videos pre-fight, pre-event, then please check out the Burt Locker on Patreon. Much appreciated. And uh, we'll recap these next week or i may have already done a recap depending on when you're watching this really this is all a kind of a time warp isn't it it's like a daddis but anyway what you can always do is just keep those odds on keep those bets terrible i'll catch you next time <laughs>